It is a truth universally acknowledged that everybody in history pooped. In ancient times, the Romans built public underground sewer systems, which not only carried waste, but also drinking water. So it paid to be upstream. The Romans used large divider-free public restrooms, some with up to 50 toilets. Many people read prayers and protection spells to keep safe from demons, rats biting their bums, and open flames that could flare up with methane pockets. In the Middle Ages, where you pooped largely depended on your class. Lower class people pooped in chamber pots, aka a jerry, gazunger, a po, thunder pot. If you were really poor, a bucket. In medieval London, it was illegal to empty these out the window. Not that it stopped many people. Most people carried their full chamber pots to a nearby stream and river and emptied them there. Larger houses had attached the trains which drained into cesspits, which were emptied by men called gong farmers, or gong farmers, who would then carry the waste to the streams and rivers. The gong farmers of London would end their shift bathing in the River Thames, which was probably only slightly cleaner than themselves. At least they were well paid. For the top of the pooping ladder, castles featured rooms called garter robes, which had literally a seat with a hole to the outside cut into it. Poop would drop right into the castle moat. When the tide was low, it would pile up above the water until it was flushed away into the river. Which was also drinking water. The word garter robe is French for wardrobe. People would hang their clothes in these rooms as the fleas and moths did not like the smell. There was a position called the groom of the king's stool, whose job was to wipe the king's bum when he was finished pooping. Naturally, this was a job of honor, and only princes or boys of royalty were allowed to do it. With all this poop being thrown around, you can imagine the smell literally everywhere. If you can't, think about this. Archaeologists have found medieval poop, and it still stinks to this day. This past year, they even found several 700-year-old barrels unearthed in Denmark in the Werner Square. Boy, do we stink, Brandon. Finally, in 1596, a man named John Harrington, who was actually an English poet, invented a flushing toilet for Queen Elizabeth I. But it was so loud, it scared her from using it. It did, however, become popular to call this new invention after its creator, John. By the 1850s, over 400,000 tons of sewage were flushed into the River Thames each day. Around 150 million tons of poo a year. Eventually, in the 1880s, a man came along who invented the ball cock and many other patents, which helped silence the scary flushing toilets, leading to its widespread adoption. His name? Thomas Crapper. <laughs> Fun fact, the U.S. Navy has developed a way to vaporize poo on their vessels. The technology has been installed on their newest aircraft carrier, the Gerald Ford Aircraft Carrier, because he was a real stinky president. <laughs>